I would like to introduce our first speaker of the day. Uh, it's a representative from the Swedish Ministry of Enterprise. He has engaged in clean tech to get this up and coming industry going. Let me introduce our State Secretary, Mr. Ola Alterå. Thank you, and um, good morning, everybody. It's, uh, it's a great honor for me to be here to today at, at the uh, Stockholm Clean Tech Venture Day, uh, to meet some, so many of you in the business of, of the clean tech sector. And you are the forerunners, the pilots, in a tremendous change that will go all through business and our industry, <laughs> development of industry, technology development and, and the, the way we make business. Sweden this autumn is carrying the responsibility of the presidency of the European Union. And it's obvious that this is <clears throat> a challenging time. Besides that there is a new elected parliament in the European Union, there is a new incoming commission, there is some uncertainties about the constitution, the very constitution of the Union. We're facing the great challenges which basically spells the climate and the crisis. Or if you want to put it like that, the economic crisis and the climate crisis. But it's, as in any crisis, I think that also means possibilities. There is a possibility of getting out of the crisis and into a more sustainable development. When the old structures are breaking down, we can build some new ones that would be more sustainable. We can invest in the future and not in the past. And we have formulated this in, in a, a transition to a more eco-efficient economy. It means basically doing more with less, more wealth and more welfare with less pressure on ecosystems with less use of, of limited natural resources. You're all here because you are part of this development already. You have seen the, the business possibilities and you are already profiting out of it. And, and I think it's important to see that. That is why competitiveness, environmental care and, and industrial renewal goes together. This is a challenge that faces the whole of the world, world, all the industrialized nations and the industrializing nations all over the world. This is a, we live in an era of, of, a, of a tremendous positive development. Billions of people in the world is racing from poverty and taking the steps into an industrialized welfare society as we are already taking for granted. But the paradox is that that very success of humankind at the same, sometimes, the same time undermines itself because it's not just sustainable. We would need many planet Earth to make this equation go together. It just doesn't work out. World population is expected to grow from six to nine billions in the, to the midst of this, this, this century, and world economy four or five-fold at the same time. So we need to be much more efficient, much more eco-efficient when we're driving development and growth. I was in, but this is also seen in the business sector. There is important change taking place. I was in Washington last week at the large conference held by the um, Council of Competitiveness in the U.S. with all the leading major U.S. companies and, and, and major universities working together. And, and the, the very theme of this year's Congress was driving sustain competitiveness through sustainable energy. And they made a very clear message to the U.S. government and, and to the other governments of the world that we need a deal in Copenhagen, we need to set a price on CO2, we need to have the the business framework there to, to make this happen. And there was an obvious 
uh, fear that the U.S. had some lost years behind, that they were now having some trouble competing with China, Korea, Japan, and others, and Europe. That is, that is in, in some ways, at least, uh, ahead in this development. But I wouldn't underestimate the dynamics of the business uh, or the economy of the U.S. And, and the research community there. So I think they, they will move. It's obvious that we, they will move also very strongly in the, the coming years. But it's just one example of that this is now going through all the, the business community. But also that is an obvious uh, important role here of government, of states, and, and in Europe, of, of the European Union. And Europe took a also very clear leadership in formulating the targets for 2020 in reducing CO2 emissions to a level that is, is um, meet what the science tells us is necessary to improve energy efficiency and to um, increase uh, the renewable energy in the total energy mix. It was important to to take the leadership in the process up to the Copenhagen conference, of course, to meet the global um, climate change. But also it's important in the sense that it puts a, a more stable framework for business, giving the direction, the targets, a long-term stability to make it, it um, the business environment much better for you and others that's going to, to make this whole thing work. And that is also an important and sometimes, I think, underestimated dimension of what is now happening on the, on the political scene. And what we're now doing is, is bringing this theme of, of a change to a more eco-efficient economy, trying to bring it to the core of European policy. And part of it is, of course, pay way for the Copenhagen uh, conference, helping uh, governments, member states in Europe and other countries to see possibilities and not only costs and constraints to the economy. Change is always difficult. Uh, you, you, we hesitate and it, there is some cost in the change itself. But we, we also, by this way, uh, want to lift the, the possibilities and what is what is possible to achieve in competitiveness, new jobs and, and innovation. But it's also then to bring it as a main theme for the long-term competitiveness uh, agenda of Europe, the so-called post-Lisbon strategy that will kind of lay out the, the strategy of the Union for the coming decade. That will be decided during the spring, during the Spanish presidency. But we are now trying to, to set the, uh, the main theme for, for the long-term competitiveness strategy of Europe into this transition to a more eco-efficient economy.